Hello and welcome to the OMG Genomics Show. I'm your host, Maria Nadestad, and today we're going to talk about data wrangling. So because bioinformatics has a really strong relationship with data science, we can also spend about 90% of our time sometimes just getting data into the right format. There are multiple different things you have to do in that case where you have data in weird formats that you just need to figure out how to work with. And I'm going to show you today three different commonly used tools to deal with different issues that you might have with bioinformatics data. We're going to talk about how to use the Sublime Text text editor to remove CHR prefixes from chromosome names. We're going to use Excel to split data into different columns with weird delimiters when you have colons and dashes as delimiters in your data instead of proper commas and tabs. And I'm going to show you how to use awk to filter your data so that the rows that you don't want go away and the rows that you do want stay in your data. Awk is a really powerful tool, so this is just scratching the surface of what you can do with it. But it's going to be a really useful episode to get you started with data wrangling. And from there, you can just use Google and continue whenever you have something special that you want to do for your particular data set. So this is a little bit of a tasting menu. And so let's get right into it. There are many tools that can accomplish the same tasks and many tasks that can be accomplished by many different tools. But here I'm gonna show you one example of pairing each of them so that you can get a taste for what each of these tools might be particularly useful for. Sublime Text is a text editor that actually allows you to edit things on multiple lines at once. So if I hold down Option on my Mac keyboard and I click and drag, I can expand the selection across multiple lines. And if I just select the CHR prefix from each one and I hit Delete on my keyboard, then I've deleted all the CHR prefixes from the whole file. Now all I have to do is save the file and the problem is fixed. Excel can do a lot of different things, but here's one thing that you may not know that Excel can do. It can actually be used to split compound data fields into multiple columns. Let's take a look. So in this file, we have a column here that says locus, and this column has a chromosome separated by a colon from a start and end position, which are each separated by a minus sign or a dash or a hyphen, whatever you choose to call it. So here I'm interested in splitting these up into three different columns. And this would be, for instance, if you want to plot this in circa, you need the chromosome and you need individual positions. You can't parse this kind of thing directly in most programs. So if we try to actually expand this column, what you can do is select the whole column by clicking on D. We go over to data and we go text to column. So That's how we can split things. And if we choose delimited, that's what we want here, meaning we have a certain character that would be used to split the data up. You can also choose fixed width for uh, another specific case. Now, I want to split this up first by the colon so that the chromosome becomes its own column. And you can see a preview down here that shows what happens. And then I just hit finish and I'm good. And now I'm going to rename this chromosome. Then I'm going to take, this is column E right here. I'm going to do text to columns again, delimited, and it's delimited by a minus sign. You can see the preview again and hit finish. And I'm just going to rename these uh, start and end. And that would be like the start and end position. We can then save that and we can also go and export it. So if you're in Excel, you can always go to save as and choose CSV. And that way we can save it as a CSV file. And now you can see we have our separate columns and they are in fact just comma delimited here. Awk is essentially its own programming language that you can run from the command line. And it's really powerful for going row by row in your data and applying some kind of function to that row, changing some of the values around, moving fields around, or deciding to include or exclude one of those rows depending on some different conditions that you set. So I'm going to show you here just how to do that row level data filtering, and maybe we'll cover some of the many other things that Awk can do in future videos. For this example, you want to know a little bit about Bash and the command line first. There's a few other introductory videos on this channel that cover Bash right from the beginning. So go check out those first if you're not already comfortable on the command line. Now, let's take a look at this file. 
So we have this file here that has all these different columns in it. I'm not, I'm not going to go into too much detail about what these columns mean, but let's just say that I want to filter out this column right here that has a percent match in it. And so I just count over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the seventh column. And I want to make sure that I can filter based on that. I always like to make sure that I'm getting the right column before I start filtering based on the wrong one. So I'm just going to check that this is in fact column seven and it is, we're getting the right column here. So that's a way to check. We're just going to cut that out. So there's many different ways of using awk and I'm going to show you a little bit of a shortcut here that makes it faster when you're just filtering the rows. So the way that you start with awk is you use the single quote, which on an American keyboard is left of the return or enter key. So we do a single quote, then we do the dollar sign, which hopefully you can find if you're not in America too. So we want the dollar sign seven, and that means column seven. So now if column seven is greater than or equal to, and this was a 99, let's say 99.9. .9. We want to grab all the rows where column seven has a number greater than or equal to 99.9, .9, close to single quotes and put in your file name. And instead of printing out all of it to the command line here, I'm just going to pipe it to less dash S so I can see it, but we can still see all the old commands that I put in and we don't just crowd out the whole view. So I always do this piping to less dash S. It's a good trick. Let's do that. All right, so now you can see that all of the numbers that are left here, we don't have any of those 97% or 99.7% or anything like that anymore. You just get 99.9 .9 and greater than or equal to. Okay. So we also have some chromosome names here. So let me show you another thing that you can do for filtering. So let's pick something that's not a number. Let's say we want all the ones that are on chromosome X. So let's print out all of our chromosomes. I want this CHR1 over here. I want all the ones where it says CHRX because I know that those are probably somewhere else in the file. So if you want to show just all of the rows that are related to chromosome X, to figure out what column that is, you can count by tapping your finger directly on your computer screen, or here's another way. So what I like to do if I'm too lazy to count right now is to say, for instance, column 10 and up. And I can just pipe that to head and see what we get. Okay. So if I, I can see here, I have two more columns before it. So let's say column 12 and up. Excellent. And so if I just do column 12, I'm getting the column that I'm interested in. So now I know it's column 12. And so you can pipe it and do awk filtering again but you can also do some logic, some conditional logic in here inside of awk. So if I want to say I want where column 12 equals chromosome X, and I want to put chromosome X in quotes so that it doesn't try to find a variable called chromosome X, it just matches to the exact string chromosome X. And here, this these two ampersands, I'll use my mouse here. The two ampersands mean that we want where both of those conditions are true. If you want where one of them is true, so it's either a high quality alignment or it's on chromosome X, you can use the two pipes here to get that kind of result. So this means and, and two pipes means or. So let's do this and see if we get any alignments that are over 99.9% quality or equal to, and that are on chromosome X. Excellent. Okay. So here we see it's capturing chromosome X all the way down here, and we have 99.9% .9 or higher accuracy. And so that's how you can filter rows, both based on greater or equal to, less than or equal to kind of numbers, but also based on exact matching. And you can use regex as well. So now that we have the correct result, we just want to save this to a file. And you can do that by removing the last pipe here. And instead, 
using this greater than sign to output to a file. And I'm just going to make it the same file, but give it an underscore filtered here right before the extension. So now I'll use less dash s to open up our new file so we can see whether it worked the way we wanted it to. And we can see here that they all are chromosome x and have a quality score above or equal to 99.9. .9. So that was a quick taste of some of the tools that you might be able to use for various data wrangling issues that you have with your data. So if you want more videos like this, head over to omgenomics.com slash subscribe and sign up for the weekly email updates. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments here on YouTube. I basically answer every single one of them. And sometimes I even make a video to answer your questions. So feel free to leave comments down there if you have any questions at all. And I hope to see you next time on the OM Genomics Show.